Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Arch Linux is considered by many to be too complicated and demanding. This is evident right from the start during the installation. There is no graphical installer, you have to carry out the steps yourself. However, there is now an official script that makes the installation a little easier. This video is all about this script. And now, let's get it started. Until now, the Arch Linux installation process was completely manual. This means that every step had to be carried out the old-fashioned way. Some found this very comfortable. Others found it far too consuming and therefore no longer up to date. However, Arch now offers the Arch install script to simplify the installation process. In this video, we will take a step-by-step -step look at Arch install and install a system with ButterFS file systems and hard drive encryption. This guide assumes that you have already downloaded the ISO file and optionally you have also verified the checksum of it. We will now boot into the new system either on a real computer or in a VM. If you don't know how to download and check the ISO, please take a look at my video of Arch Linux 2024, the link is in the description below. And now let's install the new system. The system has booted. We type now Arch install. First is the Arch install language. I stay with English. If you have a different choice, choose your language, select it, press enter. Next is the mirror section. Click on it and then click on mirror region. And then I recommend you to choose a mirror near to your location. In my case, this is Germany. So I select Germany and just hit enter. Good, go back. And by the way, if you have a custom mirror known, you can set this here. I don't know any custom mirrors, so I just select Germany and then go back. Locales. Here, click Enter. Here you can set the keyboard layout, the local language and the encoding. In my case, I recommend you to customize it to your location. So let's set a keyboard layout. In my case, I choose a German keyboard language layout. In your case, you can stay with English local language I stay with English, so I just go back. This configuration, this is a very necessary step, click on it and then I select user best effort default partition layout, hit enter and here now you have to be careful and select your device. Dev SDA is usually your hard disk and in this case I'm in a virtual machine, I have no other partitions. If you have other partitions you have to be very careful not to crash other systems. In this case I select this device and hit enter. Now I select which file system my partition should use. I prefer ButterFS so I just hit enter at ButterFS. And of course with ButterFS I want to benefit from the sub volumes so I select here yes. And I also would use the compression, so I also use compression. Disk encryption, this is a step you have to decide. I generally recommend to use a disk encryption. So I set my password here, a very strong and complicated password is recommended. <laughs> and I know I'm not the best example now, but you have to type it twice. Disk encryption tag is locked, that's okay. Partitions I don't change and then I go back. Bootloader, I let system deboot. Unified kernel images, I let false. Swap, I won't change. Hostname, set your hostname. This is the name how your computer is listed in your network. For now, you can also change it. Well, let's say Arch Linux uh, 24. Root account, you have to decide either you use a root user or you use a user account with some extra privileges in the sense of sudo. I generally don't use a root account, I use a normal user with sudo privileges. So I select user account, add a user and now enter your username. I use Michael and I set a password for Michael. Yeah, it's very weak. <laughs> like I said, it should be strong and complicated and don't follow my example. And this is very important. Should Michael be a super user, sudo? And this I select yes, and it's the default. 
So you can add different users, you can add more users. Uh, I'm fine for now, I say confirm and exit. Profile, this is now very important to select. Set type, and here you can select desktop minimal server xorg. I select desktop, and in the next step you can choose the desktop environment you prefer. Here you have some well-known desktop environments such as Bachi, Cinnamon, Deepin Desktop Environment, Gnome, KDE, and so on. I select Gnome, just hit enter, and now you can choose on a physical machine with some graphic card such as NVIDIA. Maybe it makes sense to use the NVIDIA kernel model. In my case, I use all open source default. As login manager, I use GDM, that's fine for me, and go back. Audio, if you want audio on your system, I recommend you to choose between Pipewire and Pulse Audio. I select Pipewire in my case. Kernels, I'll leave it as it is. Additional packages, I have also nothing to install additionally, but if you want, you can set it here. I don't have. Just leave blank to skip. Network configuration, this is very important, otherwise your system has no network and you have to redo all the efforts manually. So, network configuration. I use Network Manager. It's necessary to configure internet graphically in GNOME and KDE. So that's fine for me. Select your time zone, UTC is standard here. I don't know where you're located. I'm located in Germany, as I said, and I will go on a journey around the world. Automatic time sync is okay for my end. I don't have any optional repositories. If you want, you can select it. I don't have any, so I just hit escape. And now we are done with our pre-configuration. The next step is to install our now configured system. Just hit install and then press enter to continue. And now it's time for a small break. The installation process takes around about 10 minutes. And it's time for a break, have a coffee or a tea or whatever you prefer and see you in a few minutes.
So at the end of the process you have the possibility to switch into the new installed system right now. I don't want to do it, so I choose no. And the script ends. Now you can reboot into your new system, just type in reboot. The installation with ButterFS file system works smoothly. The sub volumes such as add for root and at home for slash home are also correctly integrated. This allows you to use TimeShift to create snapshots and rollback able ButterFS snapshots instead of using rsync. Arch install makes the manual installation easier and noticeably faster if you know what to set where and how. However, it is still a far cry from an installer such those offered by Linux Mint or Ubuntu for example. Please consider this. If you want to see more about Arch Linux, in the description is the link to my test from 2024. Feel free to take a look at it when you are done with this video. Please note that the Arch install script is not set in stone. It is a snapshot in time. If you look in this video at a later date, you should expect that the script has been changed at one point or another. Perhaps the order has been changed, options added or removed, or something has changed in the wording. You should know that all of this is possible. Therefore, please do not expect the installation video to be fully valid for all eternity. Understand it is more an overview of what you have to expect if you install Arch Linux with the Arch install script. It is an orientation guide. Please keep that in mind. I wish you a lot of fun with your Arch Linux system. As a tip, I recommend that you update it at least once a week. Do not extend the intervals between the updates too far, otherwise problems could arise. You can also find out how to update the system in the terminal in my Arch Linux test. The link is in the description as I said. If you like this video and are interested in Linux content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and activate the bell, then you will be up to date if a new video comes out. Thank you for the kind attention ladies and gentlemen. See you soon. May the source be with you. Peace.